Hey, what's up? I'm Dan. Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we are going to go back over um, the inside interior paintwork that I did inside the Mustang. Um, I already have that sanded down. We're going to reprep, we're going to remask some areas, and then we're going to shoot some 2K primer. Uh, my goal in this episode is to get that primer done, get a few layers on there, get the dash set, uh, make sure the paint's adhering okay, make sure all that's good. Um, if I can squeeze it in, I may do some interior black. We'll see how it goes, but uh, yeah, let's get started. So just a quick note on the remasking. You may have noticed that um, I I didn't use the plastic again here at the door jams. I think um, with the high pressure air spray um, with the paint, it just it got in the way too much. So I just taped everything uh, real lightly. I'm not gonna be painting back here. It's just the mist. I don't want to settle on anything. Um, and then I've got some seats and stuff in the trunk, so I don't want that to get coated. So I just threw the plastic up there. So um, okay, now I'm gonna get some of my paint prep stuff, go over the surface up here, and um, get ready to spray again. All right, well, good news and bad news on the paint front. Good news is, I figured out why my primer was not going on right in the last episode. Um, may have still been surface contamination, but I think the main reason that it didn't go on is because of this. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, paint had separated. I guess it's been sitting on the shelf in the place that I got it for a long time. Um, so I had to basically grab a giant stir, which I made and carve it all off the bottom. It seems to be mixing, so I think the paint is, is still okay. Uh, it's just gonna take me a long time to sit here and mix it. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, that's pretty good. Good news is, you ever have uh, 2K primer like this separated? Like, completely separated? Like, globs stuck to the bottom that you have to pry off separated? They will go back together so your paint isn't wasted. So, that's the good news. Bad news, I just wasted about a half an hour stirring paint. And you guys got to watch me. Alright, so I think I've got this pretty good. I'm gonna do some prep and clean up and then we're gonna see how this actually sprays out of the gun now. This is completely different than what I was spraying before. Should be interesting.
Okay, so the interior primer went on really, really well. Um, that was the, the paint mixing was definitely my issue, so lesson learned there. Uh, if you buy 2K primer, it might have been on a shelf for a long time, so um, definitely get a paint stick in there and uh, get it all mixed up because shaking it is not enough. Um, so I guess what, what I still have here on the door is uh, from the last time I painted it. Um, this is kind of the old oily separated part of the paint. Um, so I'm going to go back over this with some wax and grease remover and I'm going to spray that in primer as well so then I've got everything on the interior um, done with primer and, and all set to go. Um, I think also what I'm going to do is I have some uh, rear quarter inner pieces uh, that are also metal that I need to paint so I'm going to get those out, get them positioned on the uh, inside of the car and I'm going to spray them down too. So we'll have everything in the interior primered. Um, if all that goes well then um, I'm going to get into sanding that down and getting ready for the set in black and hopefully I can get that all done today. Okay. Okay, we're back for day two of, well, it's not day two, but it's day two of this video. Um, we are gonna finish paint today. We're gonna get some black laid down on the interior of the Mustang, so I'm excited about that. Um, where we are right now is I have the interior primed. Um, all the doors, all the interior quarter panels, um, everything's primed, paint laid down really good after I, I really well after I figured out uh, that it wasn't mixing properly, so that was huge. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we have to uh, paint a little bit more on the dash. Um, I did some wet sanding. I'm gonna show you guys inside the car in a minute. Um, so we're gonna have to respray that with some uh, primer and we're gonna let that tack up about 10 minutes and then we're gonna spray black and we're gonna do it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so you can see here, I've got the dash, um, got a really nice uh, coat on it. It went over a few times the last time I sprayed it. Um, so the coverage is really good. Um, there were some scratches that, that were still showing through from, uh, from when I prepped the paint. Um, so I had to go over and uh, wet sand all that. So it, it should be pretty smooth now and good to go. Um, on the door, I think if I can find the right angle, you'll see that. Yeah, so I, I talked about this texture on the door before. Um, there's a couple spots where I laid down a lot of primer and kind of covered that, so we'll we'll see what shows through in uh, in the eventual top coat. But yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be good. All right, I am just going to get started. We're going to prime the dash again. So quick note, uh, it's a little rainy here today. It's not raining currently, the sun is out, but it's supposed to rain sometime in the next couple hours. Um, so I need to take these uh, interior quarter panels and just position them in the back here. I'm just gonna paint everything in the car. Um, I don't want a chance of weather uh, messing that up. So um, yeah, I have, the, I have my tarp back there. Hopefully it doesn't flap around and get in the way of the paint, but I think we'll be okay.
Okay, so here we are mixing the real paint. Um, I've actually just taken to mixing this stuff right on the floor. Uh, I used a piece of cardboard. Um, I was just messing up my workbench and I'm not doing enough painting to justify setting up like a very specific paint clean area. Um, so we're on the floor on cardboard. Um, using a digital scale, I don't know if I pointed this out before. Um, to me, this is just the most accurate way. It's down to, you know, 0.1, point, yeah, 0.1 of an ounce. So I, I can get it pretty close and replicate it over and over and over. Um, so I start with all this stuff sitting on the scale so it zeroes out with my container and my filter. Um, shaken this up already, but this was actually mixed probably a lot more recently than that primer that I had, so I don't think I'm gonna have the same paint separation issue with it. Um, yeah, so crack this open. And unlike the primer, this is a uh, Omni MBC. This is just a base coat black. It's like standard for black paint code 9295. This was standard for Ford interiors. Uh, it's also kind of commonly used as a chassis black. So it's just a satin black, plain black. Um, it's kind of weird. It has like a bluish tint to it. So it's, I'm interested to see how it's going to come out. I'm just going to stir this real quick, make sure it's not separated and it feels pretty good. Actually it looks really, really nice. Um, so um, primer was mixed four one to one, which means uh, four parts paint, one part reducer, one part hardener. This is just uh, one to one, uh, one part paint, one part reducer. So no hardener, don't know why. Maybe somebody out there can explain that one, but. I have no idea. Um, you know what, I'm gonna get, I've got a little scooper. Rather than make a mess out of this. So I've actually been using this little scooper, which I think came with like a coffee maker, French press kind of thing. Um, or maybe it came out of a Gatorade container, I don't know. Um, but it's like a hard plastic, seems to be holding up pretty well to the, the chemicals in the paint, a lot of plastics, um, they may look like they're, they're okay to use with this stuff, um, but then in, after a couple minutes they actually start getting really soft and will eventually just dissolve because this stuff's pretty harsh. Uh, this seems to be holding up pretty well. I find generally harder plastics are okay to use with paint, um, whereas the softer plastics are not and they will melt. Uh, or you could just go out and buy the real stuff, but all these containers, while they're cheap to buy once, um, Buying them over and over and over again gets really expensive really fast. So I try to be thrifty where I can uh, without being overly cheap. Um, okay, so we're gonna do, I think what my calculations say based on the amount of primer that I spray and the amount of material I use, um, I'm probably gonna need about 12 ounces total to get those two quarter panels, the two doors and the dash, probably uh, two to three light coats each. So I'm gonna do six ounces of paint, six ounces of reducer and yeah. I'm um, just using a standard filter. It's like a medium mesh. Um, you can buy these at Ace Hardware, Home Depot, wherever where they sell any kind of paint. Um, I'm not sure if if medium mesh is the right kind. I probably should. If this were a finished coat. I'd probably be a little more picky about that and, and probably use a, a fine mesh filter. All right, so I'm just at six ounces now. Got to account for some of the paint that's going to get left in the filter. So I'm going to go a little over, probably like 6.2. Yeah, there we go. Okay. my reducer. I put this in a mason jar just because the container it came in did not pour well so it just spilled it everywhere. So now I need to go up to 12.2 and I may not have enough. Let's see. No, I, of course I don't have ounce measurements on this jar. And uh, 11.2, I need more. Okay. Great, now 
pulling just an ounce out of here is going to be such a pain. Just going to have to do little splashes. Otherwise it runs down the jar and gets all over everything. So 12.0. Oh, 12.5. Oh, no. Come out a little thinner, I guess. Okay. So that's that. It still has a bluish tint, and I don't know if that's normal. Uh, it's kind of freaking, freaking me out a little bit. There's the mail. All right, so we're going to get this stirred up. Yeah, I, my dash, my interior comes out blue. <laughs> I'm gonna have some choice words for the paint shop to mix this stuff up. Oh man, if you've never mixed auto paint before, these fumes are just terrible. I'm gonna go put my respirator back on. That thing actually really works. Well worth 130 bucks. I don't smell anything. Um, haven't had any kind of dizzy nausea. 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 Um, yeah, respirator. That's the way to go. All right, I'm about done mixing this up, so we're gonna put in the gun and get back in the car and see what happens. Here goes nothing. was terrible uh, it actually looks like it's turning black so not super concerned about the paint um, respirator definitely doesn't work as well with the base coat um, compared to the primer the primer is way less noxious that stuff is terrible in fact I'm still sitting here in the draft of my garage kind of breathing it so um, I'm gonna give that some time I still need to clean up all my stuff but it's it's uh, it's pretty noxious in there so I'm gonna Give it a few minutes, let it air out. I need to breathe some real oxygen and then we'll, we'll see what happened. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. Um, I still have the respirator on, so I'm a bit muffled. Uh, sorry about that, but I don't want to get chronic asthma. Um, all right, so first thing, the dash. Um, things are looking blackish, which is good. Um, so hard to see in here. I just don't have enough light inside the car and I'm not sure if I can even get there. Um, so there are a few areas where, uh, see, I don't know if you can see that, where you see like a turquoise tint, that just means I did not get enough black there. Um, so this is definitely the first coat. Uh, with that in mind, if I had to do this over again, I would definitely go lighter and not be so concerned with the turquoise color. Uh, there's some areas where I got some runs, specifically over there under the glove box. Um, so, I'm really just going to have to see what this looks like when it dries. Um, these things, painting these in the car was not the best idea, but like I said, I've got a little bit of weather, so I was kind of forced to do that. We'll see how they come out, but I think with another coat, everything will, um, will look pretty good. Um, it's just a matter of getting that gun at the right angle so I don't get the runs that I got this time. And... Uh, and of course painting this other door. I decided to wait on that um, just because I, I wasn't sure how the rest of this was turning out. So yeah, but it, uh, I think it's a good start. I'm um, just going to figure out what to do next and uh, see what my recoat window is and see if I can get anything else done today or if I need to let it sit in here 
and deal with it at a different time. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, and uh, if I can do more, then I will do that. Otherwise, I'll be back to wrap up this episode. <clears throat> test, test, one, two, audio. All right, so here's where we are. I uh, have one coat, one very heavy coat of uh, black paint on the interior. Um, did not paint the driver's door just because I wanted to see how it would set up. So I've um, been doing some reading while eating lunch. And uh, basically what we have to do is we've got a 24 hour window in which to recode everything. And um, it's not super critical on the dash. I could basically take my time and over the next week or two continue to sand between coats and get that mechanical bond. But to get the chemical bond, which is getting the, the, the layers of paint to actually bond to each other chemically, um, you need to recoat within 24 hours. And that's especially important on the pieces like these rear quarter trim panel pieces and the doors that have this texture because I can't sand those. So I need to make sure that I, I get everything coated within this 24 hour period. So um, I need to get set up again and we're gonna go in here and spray. I need to do something to reorient these quarter panels because that um, just trying to deal with them and the plastic, that was a big pain and caused a lot of stress and uh, everything when I was inside the car in tight confines and um, yeah the other thing is this uh, base coat stuff way more noxious than the primer I mean at my garage I've had it airing out for a couple hours now and it's still um, it's still pretty bad in here uh, so FYI you can't smell anything over the internet when you're watching videos on how to do this stuff so it's uh, it's always enlightening to find out that kind of stuff um, yeah, so I've got to come in here, I've got to reposition some stuff. Um, I do have some runs on the dash, which I have to take care of, so I think that's dry enough now. Um, so I'm gonna go through with, I think, probably some 600 or, yeah, probably 600 grit sandpaper and wet sand those, try to get rid of those runs and sags, because uh, the problem I'm having is like, with all the extra stuff I have in my gun, the filter and the regulator, um, when I get down there to try to hit the bottom of the dash below the glove box, um, I'm hitting, you know, with the air hose and everything, I'm hitting the floor and that's kind of messing up my spray pattern and I also can't get low enough. Um, so I'm hitting the one section of the curve really close, the bottom not enough, so I'm kind of getting not enough coverage on the bottom and too much right on that ridge. So I've got to figure that out. Um, I will probably just try to correct that with technique. I don't think there's much I can do. I can't take the filter off, can't take the regulator off. Um, but in the meantime, I need to go in there and sand that to uh, to get that fixed. And I'm also, I need to retape um, some of the, the masking on these jams because um, my, my primer, I, I kind of sprayed past that and hit some of the, the exterior paint. I'm not gonna be painting the outside of this car for a while, so I definitely don't want a whole lot of overspray coming out of the interior on that. Um, yeah, so a little more, more prep work, and uh, then I'm going to get back to uh, next coat of paint.
looking like for just one night No looking back Cause tonight will make you right And I can't tell you, you have to see Let me show you, I'll set you free A world unknown, pure ecstasy No looking back, just come with me And I can't fight this feeling We're up all night long Coming down heartbeat Walk to the rhythm man. ain't no stopping us now Alright, so that's pretty much a wrap for this episode. I uh, got a lot of progress done, so that, that's super awesome. The paint has been holding me up on a lot of other interior work, so I'm really happy to get that out of the way. Um, I looked at it, I have all the paint peeled off, I took some shots, some detail shots. Um, it's hard to see the texture in the garage, it'll really start to pop when I start to get some of the other stuff um, in the interior. So I think coming up next, next couple episodes, we're gonna be taking care of some of that stuff. Um, I need to get the carpet, need to get that ordered. Um, so I'll probably do that in an episode. Um, I've got some Recaros, which I'm gonna rebuild and restore, kind of semi-restore on the cheap. Um, so we're gonna be looking at that. And then I'm also thinking about a complete rewire. Um, I've got the car kind of stripped down now. This is the best time. It's gonna be the best time for me to do that. Um, Really not looking forward to that. It's going to be pretty boring in terms of video content, so I got to think about a way to uh, to get that done and still kind of uh, make compelling videos. Um, so yeah, those are the things I have stacked up. Um, I'm actually traveling for the next week or two, so it's going to be tough for me to make some new content. But um, yeah, I'm going to figure out what to do next and uh, keep going on the project. Thanks for watching. If you like it. Uh, hit, hit, throw me a like, subscribe to the channel, got lots more to come on this Mustang and some other projects as well. Thanks for watching.